everyone today we are going to study a very new topic from the chapter how do organisms reproduce in this topic we are particularly taking our sub topic to discuss today that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants now in this topic first we need to understand what is a flowering plant you have already studied about flowering plants in class 9 in plant kingdom where bryophyta angiosperms gymnosperms stereophyta all these things you have already gone through so angiosperm is a plant which produces flowers flower is the reproductive part of that plant so this is the diagram of a typical flower let's see what are the parts or whorls parts are in this topic we will call it as whorls of flower let us see what are they first the simple one is the corolla or the petals petals are colorful and they attract lot of insects for pollination next another one is the sepal sepal protects the bud in the bud stage when it is in a bud stage the sepal protects it okay as well as it take part in photosynthesis as well this lower part is the thalamus and this is the pedicel okay now the other parts or the rather i am coming to the main parts let us see what are they there is two parts this is a bisexual flower so there are two major parts one is the gynoecium and another one is the androecium androecium is also termed as stamen all right and gynoecium is also termed as carpel in some books it may also be termed as pistil etc so gymnosperm sorry i'm sorry a gynoecium is the female part of the flower and androecium is the male part of the flower so this is a bisexual flower now let's get into the in detail structure of androecium and gynoecium let's see in stamen we have anther this is the upper part and the stick like structure this is known as the filament for ease of understanding i have elaborated the diagram over here see this is the anther this is the filament and this portion which connects the anther with the filament it is the connective all right so that's the structure of androecium now let us see the structure of gynoecium look here on gynoecium consists of stigma style oval see the diagram this is the stigma this part is the style and this portion the circular part is the oval inside the ovary there lies the ovules okay so let us recapitulate once again a typical flower consists of the following uh, whorls or parts what are they first of all is the corolla sepals or calyx then gynoecium and androecium gynoecium has three parts stigma style ovary and androecium it has anther and filament anther and filament are connected by a connective okay now let us get into a little bit depth of this chapter first of all i will discuss that i am rubbing the diagram and then i will discuss about anther
grain. Now this pollen grain, this circular structure are known as the pollen sac. So binome structure of anther consists of four pollen sac and inside the pollen sac there lies the pollen grain. Okay, now this pollen grain, particular structure of a pollen grain. Let us see how it looks. Two 
and one generative nucleus which then divides into two main gametes which are haploid means they have single set of chromosomes okay now this was the this is known as main gametophyte okay this is known as main gametophyte so this was the entire concept of development of male gametes and male gametophyte now let us see about the female part that is the gynoecium so i clear the board Now, in this portion, let me draw it, draw it properly, then I'll let you know. Okay. Now, in this part, this is known as the stigma, this is the style, and this is the ovary. Now, inside the ovary, there consists of ovule, right? Now the structure, the, here I will show it just in this way. This is the ovule, right? Now this is the entire gynoecium. But if I elaborate or draw, means magnify the structure in details about the structure of the ovule, then we can write it like this. Just have a look. There is two central 
embryo cell. Then it consists of antipodal cells. This part inside another one is the polar nuclei and there are two synergies and the egg cell. That's most important. Three important concepts or three important uh, cells which are present in the embryo sac. Antimodal cells, egg cell, synergies and the central polar nucleus. So this is the structure of an ovule. Okay. Once again I will repeat the structure of an ovule. Understand this carefully. This is the structure of gynosium. Stigma style ovary. Inside the ovary there is ovule. If I magnify the structure it looks somewhat like this. What is there? This portion, this stick like structure, this is the funny cell. Then this point of attachment is known as hilum. This circular part, it is known as the embryo sac. This side of the part is known as the rampe. The upper part is the chalaza. This portion, the cell surrounding the embryo sac is the new cells. These are the integuments. Now inside the embryo sac, there is antimodal cells, there is two polar nuclei, there is egg cell and there are the synergy. Egg cell is the middle one and synergies are on both sides. Right? So I hope that is clear. Now one important function of new cells is it is a nutritive tissue around the embryo sac. Okay, for the timing this is enough, you just need to know another important thing that is the microbiome. It is the portion from where the pollen tube enters the ovule. Let us see that, we have already come to the last part of it. Now, as we have already discussed that pollen will fall on the stigma of a flower. Now, pollen will consist of male gametes and the ovule consists of female gamete. Which is the female gamete? Female gamete is the egg. Egg is the female gamete. Okay? Now, let us see. Now let us see how that occurs. So, in between I just, as I already told you about pollination, so I am not getting into the depth of it. So let us see how fertilization occurs. We have heard of fertilization. What is fertilization? Fusion of male and female gametes to form zygote <coughs> sorry is called fertilization right that is fertilization so over here male gamete comes from the Pollen grain, rather I should put the arrow like this. Pollen grain from the generative nucleus comes to male gametes. And another one from the ovule comes the egg cell. Right? So, egg cell. Now, male ga gametes are always haploid. Okay? Means it has only single set of chromosome in their nucleus. So, this is the thing. Now we will study the last topic for today that is double fertilization. Let us see how that works.
double fertilization now what is double fertilization you will know eventually when i will tell you separately why we call it double fertilization let me first draw the diagram Okay. Now this is the stigma again. This is the style. This outer part is the ovary. This inner section inside the ovary is the ovule. Ovule I have elaborated there. So now a pollen, pollen grain of some same flower or a different flower. What will happen? It will fall on the stigma due to the process of pollination, which can be either cell or cross. Again, okay, right? So here the pollen falls on the stigma, right? Then what happens? As I told you, that it will form a pollen tube. Okay, now inside the pollen tube there will be a nucleus that is the tube nucleus and there will be two other, what are they? The generative cell broke or divided into what? Two male gametes. These are the male gametes. So this male gamete will come along this and enter through this. What is this structure? This is the micropyle as I have shown over there. This is the micropyle end. Okay. So the male gamut will travel through this. This structure is known as the pollen tube. Now the male gamut travels through this pollen tube and it enters through the micropyle end of the ovule. Now remember what are there? There are male gametes but there is only one egg cell and where is the polar nuclei this is the polar nuclei now see polar nuclei is two end means there are two cell means it is two end means double diploid okay and egg cell is haploid male gametes are haploid so they enter into this. So let me draw the structure close by. Now these becomes the male gametes. Okay. And so two male gametes that means two times fertilization will occur. Here one male gamete plus one egg cell that is N they fuse to form what? Zygote that is 2N and this was first one. The second one this process is known as Singen. Okay where one male gamete fuses directly with this egg and another Male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to polar nuclei to n that is a polar nuclei. So now this is two n and this is n. This forms a tissue known as endosperm. Rather, it is known as primary endosperm nucleus. Which is 3N. Now, 3 fusions occur, that is why this process is known as triple fusion. Alright? So, male, one male gamete with one egg will form zygote known as singeni. Another male gamete with 
known as triple fusion. Now, what is the function? This zygote will form the what it will form? It will form the seed. Okay, and this endosperm. This is a nutritive tissue which remains in the cotyledon, which actually becomes used for a dicot plant, dicot seed, and it remains a little bit in the monopod seed. So let's not get into the details of that. See, that's all with this process. Okay, once again, due to pollen pollination, pollen grain falls on the stigma, be it cell, be it cross process system. Falls on the stigma, then the pollen tube generates. Pollen tube consists of tube nucleus. It follows through the style into the ovary. Now the generative nucleus divides to form two main gametes which enter into the embryo sac which consists of egg cell. One main gamete fuses with one egg cell to form zygote. This process is known as syngamy where it first develops into an embryo then it forms a seed. Okay and another main gamete there are two main gametes so another main gamete fuses with this polar nuclei. So three so that's why I have written three n forms a primary endosperm nucleus by the process of triple fusion forming a nutritive tissue known as endosperm. Right? And what happens to the ovary? The ovary becomes the fruit. Okay? So those are the post fertilization. This is the process of fertilization. Fertilization has occurred twice. That is single and triple fusion. It is known as double fertilization. Okay? And lastly, embryo develops as seed. 